Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the 26th problem from the CP31 sheet where TLA eliminators under the 900 rated questions. Let's go. So I'll be moving on to my sheet, ticked off my 900 rated parameter and a 26th problem, odd divisor. Let's open this up. So very small problem. You are given an integer n and you have to check whether n has an odd divisor greater than 1 and that is thus there exists such a number x such that x is greater than 1 and n is divisible by x and x is odd. So they've given you a small example also. Let's say if n is 6 then x equals to 3. If n is 4 then such a number does not exist. All right. So let us try to generalize this problem. Very very simple problem. Uh, you are given one variable only that is this variable n and you have to tell whether you feel that this n variable for this n particular value or variable, whatever you call this, is there some odd divisor? Is there some odd divisor of this number n? Now, let's break this down. Odd simply means like by virtue, if you divide it by two, you should get one. That's the virtue of odd numbers. And divisor is something that is basically said, it's a factor of a number or completely divides that number that is when that number is called divisor of that number. So if I'm talking about some number x, it should be odd property one and it should be a divisor of n. So this is like of n. If such a number x exists and of course x is greater than one, I cannot take x equal to one because I know one is odd and one will always divide any number given to me by property. So I need a number that is greater than one. It should be odd and it should fully divide n. If I think such a number exists, then I'll say, okay, the answer is yes, because I know that this X is existing. And if I think such a number does not exist, then I'll say the answer is no. So very, very simple problem. Just find an odd divisor of N and tell me, is it possible to get such a number or X or not? Yes or no. All right, great. So uh, now let us try to see some of the test case and understand uh, why is it answer yes or why is the answer no. So they have actually given you a small example right here in the solution only, but we can take some case over here. Let's say I'll talk about four and five. So these two numbers, right? Just two examples. Let's say I'll talk about four. So four, of course, if you break this down into the devices it can have, you can only talk about like four is divisible by of course one, then it's divisible by two and then it's divisible by four. So one of course is something I don't want to take because I want a odd divisor, although it's a divisor, but I want an odd divisor that's greater than one. It's odd, it's a divisor, not possible though. Two is not possible of course, since it's even and four is of course not possible since it's even. So out of all the simple devices I just jot jotted down for the value of four, I know there is no odd divisor that's existing. So I know, yes, I can say for short that the answer is no. So if I go back in the case and see what's the answer for four, I can see that the answer for four is given as no. But if I simple counteract this for five, for five, the number of devices, oh, sorry, not number, the, num the devices I can write for five are basically one and then five, right? So of course, one is something I cannot take, same logic, but five is something I can take. Five is a divisor of five itself. It's a number and it's odd in nature. So five will work and yes, answer for this turns out to be yes. So that's why answer over here is given as yes. Now, of course, if you see the other cases and write them down on paper and try to figure out their answers, I'm sure you will get why is their answer yes or no. Similarly, how we sort this out for four and five. All right, great. So now let us actually discuss the expected time complexity in this problem, which is very necessary so that I don't create any redundant idea. I only think of ideas which will work in the given time limit. All right, very, very, very important concept. I know that one second basically allows me 10 power 8 elementary operations. And over here in this problem, I have been allowed that the time limit for every test is two seconds. So if I write this down something like this, that one test basically allows me two seconds. So it allows me basically two into 10 power 8 elementary operations. Now this is for every test, but in a test, you can see that there is test cases, which is given by this variable T, which is in 10 power 4 order. So if I find the number of operations, per test case, then this boils down to be two into 10 raised to eight upon 10 raised to four, which gives me two into 10 raised to four, which is not very large. It's basically telling me you can form two into 10 raised to four number of operations, elementary operations per test case. Now this is very important because if I look over here at N, N is very, very huge. N is given in, you can say 10 power 14 order. 
Now, n being in 10 power 14 order limits me that I can, of course, not create some solution that looks even like O of n, which is like a very standard solution mostly problems to create in that part. I cannot, of course, create anything bigger than n, so n square and all this is out of picture. I want to even go lower than this, that is n, uh, O of n. That means somewhere in log base parts of n, this is going to work. Or if I create a constant solution, this works. Now, pretty much this is by experience telling me that, okay, since the solution is, uh, sorry, since n given in this problem is so high, we are looking for a solution that is very quick and it's somewhat related to some mathematics because mathematical solutions tend to give you time complexities that are in log orders or even constant orders or are definitely in lower orders. We don't want to run some sort of a brute solution or some sort of a simulation which might go in O of n solution. And this is the upper bound. So you can say this is what I'm getting as an upper bound. All of this stuff is not allowed, but stuff like this is allowed. Okay, so this is our expected time complexity discussion. Very, very important. Great. Now let us actually move on to how do we solve the problem and what's the argument behind solving this problem? Argument of the problem is very simple. I'll write this down. Argument is if n is a power of 2, answer is no else yes this is all the argument that is if you are able to identify the number n being a power of 2 then you will say that the answer is no else you will say the answer is yes let us let's try to understand why okay very simple thing let's say you have a prime factor p1 and then for that let's say the power is let's say a1 then maybe you can call this into prime factor p2 then power is a2 into let's say prime factor p3 power is a3 so on so on so on and this can be written till you finally exhaust the whole number basically for example let's say i take n equals to uh, 15 so i can represent this number as 3 into 5 which means that 3 is again a prime number so i can say this is 3 power 1 into then 5 is another prime for 5 power 1 so if I prime factorize this number n, I get 3 and 5 as the prime factors and they have some individual powers. So I know that n as a number can be represented in parts of primes. Okay, so this is again valid for any number. Now, why am I trying to represent n like this? That is like some powers of uh, primes is because I know a very important fact. That is, I know that there is only one even prime that exists, that is all other primes that exist are odd in nature. That is, if you count any other prime, 3, 5, 7, 11, if you take the whole table of primes, you will see that you will only have a single prime in nature that is of even nature, that is 2. That means, if I want to represent this n number in some powers of prime, I know that the least prime I'll be using is 2. Other than that, all other primes will be odd in nature. Alright, this should be important. Now, understand this. If n has any other prime factor which is not even, that is other than 2, then can you not term that prime factor as your answer? Of course you can. Let's just say that this p1 turned out to be equal to 2. Not an issue. But let's say p2 was 3, p3 was 5 and so on, so on, so on. You had some other p2, p3, so on, some other prime factors which were not 2. Since they were not 2 and 2 is the only even prime factor, you know that other primes are bound to be odd. So any of those other factors can be considered as your x. And you can say, okay, fine, this, let's say I, I encountered a single, even a single 3 for n, then I know this 3 can act as that x number. And I can say, yes, 3 is an odd divisor of n. Maybe 5 occurred one time. So I can maybe say, okay, 5 was my x. Or some other prime factor that might have occurred can be termed as x. Only the case situation occurs when I say no other odd divisor or no other odd prime factor occurred for n is when I would know that I cannot term any other prime factor as my x value. In that case, I will have to go with an answer of no, which indirectly converts my whole argument to saying that there was no other prime factor that existed in the first place. There was only a single prime p1 and that single prime p1 was actually equal to 2 which effectively says that n looked something like this, that is 2 power something like a1. 
and a number that can be written as two power something is basically saying that that number is in power of twos, which means that it cannot have or it does not have in this case any other odd divisor, which is why this wraps our argument and says that if n exists like this, that is power of two, answer is no. Else, if this n doesn't exist like this, then you are bound to find some other factor, prime factor also. And that prime factor is necessarily odd because the only even prime factor available for any uh, number n is two. So any other prime factor that exists for n will be odd. Just take that number as your considered x value. And if you take this number as your considered x value, you can print your answer to be yes. So you can say else is yes. And this is all that is the argument. So if you actually go back and see in our cases itself, when we see that, okay, four was printed as an answer of no, you know that answer for four turns out to be no because four is a power of two, it's actually two power two. Similarly, two is two power one, so the answer is no. And similarly, this last value, although it not may be clearly visible if this is a power of two or not, but this is, or this would be a power of two, definitely once we code this up, you'll understand. That is why the answer for this large number also turns out to be no. And this is the whole argument. Okay, so effectively what we are trying to do is simply just check up if the number is a power of two. If you think it is, then print a no. If you don't think it is, print a yes. I hope this should be understandable. Let's go to our coding part and now try to understand how do we implement this out. Okay, so implementation is going to be very, very simple. I'll just take the number n with consideration to me. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove all the powers of two in this number. So I'll say while I think n is divisible by two, I'm going to divide n by two. So this effectively will remove any power of two that would be occurring in that number n. And when I finally come out of my while loop, if n is greater than one, that means n has effectively boiled down to some uh, odd divisors or maybe a clubbed multiplication of some odd devices effectively still remaining odd because of the very simple fact that an odd number into an odd number is still going to give me odd. So by knowing this nature, I know that if there are some odd prime factors remaining in n itself, then their multiplication is still odd, making n greater than one. So I know there is some x selection available for me. So I'll print a yes. And if n goes less than equal to one, or basically in this case, if it will go equal to one to be specific, that means n has fully exhausted. So it must be a power of two. And if it is a power of two, no x number will be extracted from that. Hence the answer is no. All right, very, very simple question. Let's discuss the time complexity. This thing is going to be a very important fact. Let's go back to our uh, main solution over here to discuss what we think as time is the time complexity. So what I'm saying over here is let's say n is this number and it's represented as two power a effectively, like it might be represented as two power a into some other m number, which this now I know this m number is odd. So I'm just talking about the uh, even, uh, sorry, the power of two part in this n number, since I'm trying to calculate the time complexity for this while loop. So what, what can I write is I can just ignore this part for now. I can just ignore this part for now. And I can say, okay, n was two power a. So if I take log base two of n both side, this basically gives me, uh, you can write this as log base two of two power a, this a can come out and this becomes a log base two of n. So now you know that this a is the number of times this iteration would have run for this while loop, which effectively means this while loop is running in log base two of n. Now, considering that this is the time complexity for this while loop and all the other checks are pretty much constant, I know that my total time complexity now can be reported as O of log base two of n. And now coming back to the uh, main question as in understanding what was n actually given to us, we knew n was in 10 power 14 order. So if I plug this value in and I'll say, okay, this is O of uh, log base two of, this is 10 raised to 14. And then if I close my bracket, this is somewhere around, you can say 50 iterations almost, right? It's, it's actually something like this. You can Google this out for even a better acute mathematics. But then of course, this is an approximation and this being correct, in approximation is going to work because we wanted every test case to work in 10 power 4 order and we are definitely coming up with something like an O of 50 order which is next to constant it's very very fast and this actually checks our intuition in the very beginning of the problem when we discussed expected time complexity that we thought of some sort of a log based solution or some constant solution which involves a mathematics and it's very clear that there is some mathematics involved in this we had to first identify the prime factors and then reason ourselves with that okay this 
uh, ideology would have worked. I just need power of two check in the number and hence this time complexity pops up. Now what is space? Space is almost constant or not almost exactly constant you can say because I'm not taking any extra space just beside the space to store this number. And this is definitely going to work, fetches me an accepted solution on the problem. All right, so a very clever problem, correct? First identification of prime factors was very necessary. That could have built our argument of power of two. And effectively, this is all about understanding that I, I did a clever move of making that X value be any odd divisor. To identify that, I need some odd divisor in the number in the first place. So I just want to know that, okay, if all the twos are removed, there should be something that's left. Hence, power of two check on the number is what is going to work. All right, so I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.